Good afternoon, sweet ladies, and thank you for joining us in Far Above Rubies today. I'm so glad that each of you are here. We're going to talk about today and tomorrow, uh, two sides of the same coin, two women who influenced kings, one for better and one for worse. And today's lady that we're going to talk about, the couple we're going to talk about, is Queen Esther and her husband. Don't ask me to pronounce his name. I will butcher it. Your reading passage for this devotional is going to be Esther chapter 7. And before we dive into Esther, I'm going to quickly share this as a preface, okay? God laid down a godly order for our relationships. In scripture, we are told to submit to our husbands. They are to love us as Christ loves the church. They are to serve us, protect us, be mindful of us, be generous to us. But we are to be submitted to our husbands. If you don't like that, Go pray about it because it's scripture. If you're a Christian woman, you need to be submitted to your husband, okay? But don't believe for a moment that because we are to be submitted to our husbands, that we carry no influence with our husbands. You will influence your husband for better or for worse, just as these two women we're going to talk about today and tomorrow, you will influence your husband. You have a decision to make as to whether that influence will be positive or negative. So moving into Esther, many of you know Esther's story. She's one of my favorite um, people in the Bible. She was brave. She was um, submitted to God and to her husband. She had a request to make of the king, and it was huge. It was to spare the lives of all of her people. This was a massive scale influence that she needed to have with the king. But she knew that she could have influence with him, and she laid the groundwork. She found favor in his eyes by being pleasing to him, by knowing <laughs> that the way to a man's heart is through his stomach and making him two banquets, two feasts, um, two back-to-back -back days. And then she made her petition to him, okay? But I just want to show you that this little Jewish girl who in her, I say Jewish because in her culture where she was living, her, the Jews were um, a lesser people. That's why they were about to be slaughtered, okay? That Haman had made plans to have them killed. And so this little Jewish girl became a queen and influenced the king in the right direction. So let's talk about some ways in which you can influence your husband. We're going to talk about if your husband's in church and if your husband's not in church. Let's talk about the ways in which you are able to influence him while still being submitted to him. First of all, if your husband's in church, we'll start here. First of all, you can encourage and build up your husband. That is a very simple and easy place to start, to encourage and build up your husband. Don't be negative to your husband. You want to have influence with him? You want to influence big decisions in your husband's life, in your marriage? Then build him up and be an encourager. Number two, influence what comes into your home. You may not be able to, in being submitted to your husband, say, absolutely not, there's no way that'll ever, but you can influence what comes into your home. You can say, babe, I love you, but I'm not okay with that. It's your decision, but I'm not okay with that. It bothers my spirit, okay? That is one way you can influence your husband. Be submitted, but carry influence. Number three, you can encourage and influence your husband to follow God's leading. You can nudge your husband to follow God's leading, whether it's something he's been praying about and he's telling you, sharing with you, or whether it's something you've been praying about and God's nudging you. You can encourage and influence your husband to follow God's leading. Four, you can be a huge influence on your husband by being a conduit that God speaks through. This message that Esther had for the king of saving her people, this was a God thing. This was something that God put in her heart and in her life and designed her for. Be a conduit that God speaks through to your husband. When you pray, and man, you better pray. When you pray, let God speak to you. And don't be afraid to share those things with your husband. Sometimes he might look with look at you a little, mm, you know. But most of the time, if, if your husband knows you're a praying woman and you are consistently submitted to him, if you say, babe, I feel like God is leading me. I feel like God is telling me this. 
he's going to listen. You can influence your husband. And we'll quickly go through these. If your husband's not in church, here are some ways that you can influence your husband. One, by portraying a godly spirit and attitude in your home. I said it the other day. Let him argue all by himself. Let him be angry all by himself. Don't accept the invitation into those arenas. Portray a godly spirit and a godly attitude at all times as much, as much as you can, okay? To lead in prayer and church attendance. If your husband's not in church, don't let him influence you to not pray, to not go to church. You influence him. Say, I love you, but I'm going to church and I'll see you in a couple of hours. If you want to come with me, I would adore that. If you... If you do this consistently, if you do that, lead you in your home in prayer and in church attendance, if your husband is not in church, it will affect him. It might take months or it might take years. It will affect your husband. Be submitted to him, but lead in prayer and church attendance, okay? And lastly, you can and have the ability to use your influence on your husband's life if he's not in church to guide him away from destructive paths. He may not always listen. He may not always lend his ear to you, but you can use your influence. Babe, it makes me sad when you do this. Babe, it hurts me when you go down that path. Babe, it hurts our marriage when you do this. You can if you are submitted to your husband. If you are giving a consistent witness that you have a right spirit, you can influence your husband away from destructive paths. Esther influenced the king to save an entire people. An entire people. She saved the bloodlines that were coming after her, the ones we read about later on in scripture. Esther did that by being submitted and having influence in the right direction with her husband. Go read Esther chapter 7 and make sure that you tune in tomorrow for the flip side of this coin where we look at a woman who influenced the king in a negative way. You will influence your husband for better or for worse and it's up to you which one you choose. If no one's told you lately, you are loved and you are cherished. You are valuable and you have tremendous worth, my friend. And that worth is far above rubies. I love you all. <clears throat> God bless you and I'll see you tomorrow.